Hey everyone, it's Base Junkie transmitting from Hamburg, Germany, back with a new video and back with my chart haul for June 2K16. June 8th is today and I decided I could do the chart haul a little bit earlier than I did last month when I like waited or had to wait until the end of May to do it because I wasn't able to shoot the video. But now I'm gonna go into that and it's like... 3.41 in the morning so I woke up like a few hours ago because I went to bed like pretty early at 9ish or something like that and I woke up around 1 a.m. again so my body told me well enough sleep and stuff so I like spent a little time on the internet and like watched a lot of YouTube videos and stuff and procrastinated a bit also to like to wake up properly and stuff and now I'm gonna go into the video but before that I'm gonna like tell you like two little things that happened like today. One is like related to Hamburg weather because like it's summer in Germany and it's pretty hot and there have been some like floodings and stuff in the south of Germany and they had to cancel a big festival which is called Rock am Ring which is one of the biggest festivals in Germany and like they had like trouble with thunderstorms and like heavy rainfall and stuff and like lightning bolts hit the festival area the main festival area and like 71 people were injured and two had to be reanimated and stuff and like some like villages in south germany have been flooded and a lot of damage going on which was like estimated to to equal 1 billion euro of damage which is billion used like the US people use billion and there's a lot of damage going on and today I tweeted a photo when I went home from like buying groceries and stuff which like showed or depicted like a, a view over the harbor and stuff from the Landungsbrücken area where I've also filmed a video like a few weeks ago and like the whole sky was really like cloudy and black and uh, like really dark bluish black clouds like the ones you would expect from like a big like thunderstorm and weather trouble and stuff and I tweeted like well seeing this I do sense trouble kind of and like didn't think much of it and then I went home and like went to sleep because I was tired and then I opened Twitter and it was like tornado trending and I was like well tornado trending what's happening here and actually it turned out like that in the northern east part of, of the city we actually had a, a little tornado happening which uh, does not happen in Germany at all because this is not tornado land and stuff but I think there was one and I had this uh, videos well I watched on YouTube and also on like several news pages where you could see that like cloudy thing the, the cloudy hose coming down and stuff and there was some serious damage in the city and the other thing I had like uh, discovered today a few weeks ago there was this video about that like uh, Wookie mom you might remember that like who put on the Chewbacca mask and stuff and went crazy that this video went viral kind of and she had like one sentence I don't remember exactly what she said but it sounded like a like like Hedy Wayne like boxy in, in one of her old boxy videos and I t like tweeted that like okay that line sounds like an old rusty but still hyper boxy and stuff and then I went to my Twitter stats today and I was pretty impressed because Usually I get like, I don't know, 60 to 70 thousand, uh, thousand impressions on my tweet per month. And this specific tweet I, I posted about that Chewbacca mom and stuff and mentioning Boxy earned me like 64 fucking thousand impressions on one, um, on one tweet alone. And this is quite, quite a lot like taking into consideration that only like 600 or 599 people follow me on Twitter. I don't know how exactly Twitter like estimates and evaluates uh, their stats, but uh, because like in the past 24 hours they already or again have like 40,000 impressions on my tweets happening within like 24 hours, which is a lot. 
and I don't know how they like estimate and evaluate this stuff, but I was like, okay, this is quite a lot and well, it's not Thursday, so I don't do like a throwback thing, but you know, boxy is, is still a thing and still pulls off any kind of attention on the internet, I guess. So this was quite a fun thing to like experience today and stuff and to learn that like tweets twitter stats like can blow up this this massively and well that's enough ramble and rant before like going into what I, you are here for i suppose like to see my my stuff and the the music and i like this month so i'm gonna go straight into that first one you have seen in a unboxing video which is this one peter farrah avocado on the australian label split rack which was sent to me like a few weeks ago and I've done an unboxing on this and Split Rack seems to be like a pretty much experimental label with a touch of free jazz and stuff and so what's happening here in, in Peter Ferrer's record which is, has been released only recently is a lot of alto sax playing but more in a stuttering way very very experimental and very processed and stuff, so it's more like a ride into modular synthesis and stuff sound-wise and very free free structures and not so much a jazz album you will expect, but pretty interesting, pretty good, so um, Peter Ferrer Avocado is quite an album to check out. Next one is a total different tip. Dead Andre Romet by the Erle Abneset Trio, which is released on the Norwegian label Hupo Records, which always comes with a greenish uh, greenish cover and with it Hupo logo. Here's uh, the album again, which and here's the CD. Definitely an interesting label as well. I think they're based in the Norwegian experimental jazz scene originally because they've put out a lot of experimental jazz and with this one they're like stepping away from that a little bit and go more into a folksy folksy direction with a lot of like original fiddle like you know the the, the violin fiddle stuff this is a pretty romantic medieval rural feel to this album which can be compared to another classic album from the electronic side of things which is Wolfgang Vogt's Gas Project GAS which was dealing with the romanticism of the German Black Forest in an electronic way with a very misty also rural but also spooky and romantic and epic feel with like a little reference to neoclassical music I guess in the electronic sense and this is uh, kind of the same the Anna Abnesen Trio that Andre Rommet but only atmosphere wise and also more like yeah organic and classical fiddle fiddle stuff so if you have like campfires in mind campfires and like woods and stuff and Horses and knights and all that is quite that kind of feel, but interesting on to find that on a Norwegian more jazz orientated label. So good stuff, but non electronic at all. <laughs> electronic stuff we have here with uh, Ranz Lavi and Bittersweet Melodies. So a nice gatefold cover on the Portuguese label. Um, Chronica, which is like Chronica Electronica Org, is the um, URL, the website you find that at. And Hans Lavin has released on Mill Plateau, as far as I remember, on maybe also on Sub Rosa. And this is more like Electronica, glitchy, ambient stuff. Pretty good. Well, I guess one four four track on that as well. And the Chronica imprint is quite interesting and I've reviewed a lot of their stuff in the past month so they're sending me promos through their like promotion agency and if you want to have more detailed information on all of these albums you can like click the link in the description box where I'm gonna link to my chart post and stuff so you can see that. The next one is <laughs> well a trip the Jazz Fakers Hallucinations on All Real on Music. I guess it's a New York based label. I see. 
CD cover. Here's the CD back, and um, this is the CD in itself. The Jazz Fakers Hallucinations, which is also based in the. Oh, there's another thing. Here are the musicians as well. So that's a fold out. Thing. It's a quartet and the music is based in the context of very, very experimental free jazz, I'd say. And free jazz and free improvisations and stuff. Um, influenced by a book which is also called Hallucination. I think it's Oscar Sack who wrote this, but I'm not too sure about the author. And the interesting concept about this um, album is, as far as I got from the release info, that like all four musicians involved in this were under the influence of, of a certain substance of hallucinogenic nature I guess but not all were under the influence of the same so I imagine like one guy is taking LSD one is into mushrooms one is like, like smoking weed and one is doing whatever kind of substance he want to do and then they recorded this album together which is very very experimental elements of free jazz in here as well but also total chaos noise experimental electronics and yeah a lot of interesting stuff it's quite a ride and definitely not for everyone but the jazz fakers hallucinations is an interesting album indeed and now to something completely different and this is Kologo power a Volta Bolga Tanga Ghana compilation on Makum Records from the Netherlands. Um, I've been showing one Makum release in the past as well by Prince Bruju. It was uh, We're in the War. This is a CD. And Kologo is a special kind of music, like a string instrument, which is like a two string instrument, similar to a guitar, but also played with more percussions and stuff. And this is a compilation that deals with uh, different musicians who are playing this kind of music in Ghana, in the eastern part of Ghana, I think. On here are, of course, Prince Buju and other people, King Ayizoba, Ayuni Sule, Agongo, Achimbila and some others. And this, for the first time, I was fascinated by, by Prince Buju's album, We're in the War. But this, for the first time, is an experience for me that I can embrace um, how many different styles and approaches to this kind of Kologo music there are and uh, because in Germany you don't get this kind of music very often not on the radio and stuff and I don't know any people coming from from Ghana and playing this uh, kind of music so this is more like an exploration into other kinds into other cultures and um, into African music which is pretty interesting there are some Caribbean vibes in there, there's um, a lot of like only one singer and playing the Kologo and also more rough rough approaches with a little more of dance floor kind of feel but in a ritual tribal way so interesting interesting music at all. The final CD comes from Sub Rosa, great label from Belgium, definitely recommend it. An anthology of Turkish experimental music from 1961 to 2014. This is a double CD album on the Sub Rosa label, also with a little bit of like text on each musician and stuff. And this is quite interesting because Turkish experimental music, which is mostly electronic music, is also a thing you don't hear much of. And uh, if you have come across a CD series, an anthology of experimental music, which is like a seven double CD series on Sub Rosa, you might get an idea of what's on here. It's more journey, also modular synthesis and stuff, and clicks and cuts, and a little bit of electronica. Very, very good. The only down point in here is that the time span is a little bit weird because in the very early 1960s they had some very rare widespread experimental things in Turkey going on with electronic music but then there was a second wave which appeared like in the late 90s to now which is um, 
most of the stuff that is covered here. So the, the oldest track is indeed from 1961, but then there is a 35 years gap. And then there is another track following up from 1996. So what happened in between 1961 and 1996 is not really covered on the CD. Maybe because there wasn't anything happening in, in, in Turkey in terms of experimental music because the political system over there seems to be a little bit of unstable and when I consider what is happening right now with the Turkish like president uh, Erdogan like reacting to like German comedians and like also to the resolution that has been like approved by by the German parliament that the um, killing of Armenian people like 100 years ago where they killed like 1.5 million Armenian people in Turkey as far as I got that from the media it has to be like considered a genocide and they the the Turkish president like harshly protested against that and even questioned the identity of like people with Turkish roots taking place in the German or like having a place in the German parliament and recommended to have their blood tested for being Turkish. This is like a weird, weird country kind of, so politically. Not that I say that all Turks are weird, definitely not, but the political system over there is like well sketchy and I think well, they're aspiring to be a part of the EU, uh, European Union, but I don't think they should be for the next 50 or 100 years until they get their stuff sorted out politically. So nothing against the people in general, but um, there are some tricky things going on that's more like dictatorship and not like a proper democracy and like people you want to deal with politically. But that's just a side note. Going into vinyl. Well, finally, Artists in Action, Zero One, a label I didn't have much knowledge of. Here's a, a really nice look, definitely four tracks on here, four different artists. Tracks by Crystal Distortion, Suburbus, Matt Weasel and some, some other guy I don't remember right now. Which is pretty interesting from the looks I was like guessing it comes from a tribe techno scene and uh, I was right in parts. So three tracks in here are like more like proper techno, fast paced techno, nothing special at all. But then there is Matt Weasel with his track Don't Leave 180G, which you might see here, which is like a pure rave anthem, very fast, like very, very fast, like 180, I guess, maybe a little bit faster. A lot of like rave elements like and also a lot of like high-pitched R&B cheesy vocals and it's like a track that we would call in Germany like an Urwurm which has translated into, uh, into English as earworm which is a like term that usually doesn't exist in the US I guess but it's um, referring to a track that you hear and the melody sticks in your ear for ages so this is like a pretty blast, so I bought this 12 inch for for this track only mostly, although I will play the other ones. But like Don't Leave by Matt Weasel is definitely a killer. And then going into like other stuff, DJ House, Space Jams, Volume 2 on the Unknown to the Unknown label. I totally love the 90s uh, kind of artwork here, the 90s rave artwork. And this is definitely what uh, DJ House is resembling here like early techno I, I'd say. So if you imagine like tracks like Housefly by Tricky Disco, Moby's Go and LFO, LFO, all that bleeps and clongs thing from Sheffield. So very early raw produced like techno rave stuff. This is a feel you get and this I have a feeling that this is all emulated on on old machines so it's like reprogramming the the past and I own another like 12 inch by DJ house which is more like acid and this is also like great so if you've been raving like in 91 92 or got got the old rave tapes and you get that special feeling of high energy and stuff this is exactly what you've been looking for DJ house space jams is highly recommended record and once again, it's like the artwork is is amazing. So if you 
if there are like any t-shirts of, of that kind of stuff or long sleeves I totally would wear it so I'm still like a raver from the heart I'd say and uh, this is definitely touching touching my sweet spot musically and now we're going back like 10 years to 10 years ago and this guy is called motherfucker and he's from France and the label is Controverse Records and this one is pretty heavy it turned up in our record store maybe because the uh, Controverse label which is yes the the record and also the label thing and the label is kind of reactivated in a digital way put out like two records in 2005 2006 i guess and this is real real darkness it's like breakcore industrial techno unformatted hardcore stuff you definitely would expect to to be played in like illegal warehouse raves or tribe techno parties techno balls in france pretty harsh pretty dark pretty brutal and very very unstructured but good highly recommended stuff although it has been released in in 2006 i guess read me rediscovering it make it, it valuable to like be put in in this like list of top 10 records of 2016 of june 2016 and finally you have seen this in an unboxing video here kein zweiter Teilstück für den totalen Schwung on the label 90% Wasser. This is one I have unboxed as well and <coughs> excuse me. And listening to this has been like evoking memories of like groups like DAF, Deutsch Amerikanische Freundschaft. You might remember De Mussolini from back in the days. In a way very wavy industrially with like German vocals but also with a sound aesthetic that is kind of similar to what you might heard on labels like Astanoton recently but that kind of like highly digital baseline stuff and it's pretty interesting not for everyone though but um good good music definitely and also limited from the archives and it's been like 10 years i guess since kind spider has put out their first first release so this is if you love industrial and stuff and like post-punk and like this kind of German wave ingenious dilettantes stuff that has been put out in the late 70s early 80s this might be one for you definitely and I've been rambling way too long so I guess I'm gonna go into editing with this video. Hope you liked this. If you did, like, leave me a thumbs up. Follow me on social media, Twitter, and all the links are down in the in the description box below. Leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you later.